Welcome to the PCOS Diva podcast. My name is Amy Medling. I'm a certified health coach and founder of PCOS Diva. My mission is to help women with PCOS find the tools and knowledge they need to take control of their PCOS so they can regain their fertility, femininity, health, and happiness. Today's PCOS Diva podcast is sponsored by the seven-day Discover Your PCOS Diva Jumpstart program. Jumpstart is the place to begin when you're ready to commit to yourself and jump into your healing journey. Learn step-by-step how diet, lifestyle, and mindset changes can get you on the right path. You'll be thrilled to feel your energy return, brain fog lift, acne begin to clear, and so much more. Visit PCOSDiva.com slash jumpstart for more information and to get started today. If you haven't already, make sure you check out PCOSDiva.com. There I offer tons of great free information about PCOS and how to develop your PCOS diet and lifestyle plan so you can begin to thrive like a PCOS diva. Look for me on iTunes, Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram as well. I am so happy to be welcoming Dr. Mary Clifton onto the PCOS Diva podcast today. She is somebody I've known for years, and uh, we finally connected this summer again, and she agreed to come on and talk about CBD oil, uh, which is, I know for a lot of divas, is something that you really want more information about. So let me give you a little background about Dr. Clifton before I um, welcome her. So she is an internal medicine doctor in New York City with 20 years of experience in both the hospital and private practice. And she's also licensed by the state of New York's Department of Health to provide medical marijuana and is rec- a recognized expert in CBD, cannabis, and medical marijuana. So the perfect person to have on. Welcome, Dr. Clifton. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really excited to share everything that, that all the information I can with your audience today. So I know that you must have a personal story behind um, CBD and medical marijuana and how you kind of shifted into um, this field of study and have you really become a world-renowned expert in this topic. So uh, tell us your story. Well, I, for, I've always been excited about things that are innovative and disruptive, especially in medicine, because medicine is so expensive. And I feel like as doctors, more often we take the control away from the patient and make, and, and make patients feel like they don't have any way that they can impact their own health. So for years, I worked in vegan diet. And then, uh, and then had a couple of experiences that, that just changed my uh, my approach to uh, what I wanted to work in. I had my older brother die of colon cancer, and um, I I'm an internist. You know, I take care of people in hospice routinely, but this was a hospice case where I was at the bedside administering medications rather than working with a nurse over the telephone. And I got to see what was working and what wasn't. And I I have to say it was a terrible death. It was just probably my mother and I both agreed perhaps the worst death either of us had ever uh, been intimate with. And then about four months later, one of my girlfriends died. And thank goodness, not a close girlfriend or, you know, that kind of thing can really lead to some awful depression, but a good friend close enough that I was at bedside with her and she had cannabis on board, but, um, and and a different person, but the, the death experience for her was so vastly different that I thought, there must be something to this, but all you ever hear is that there's no research. We have no data. So I I said, I'll just go research. That's what I do. I'm a doctor. I'll go research and I'll prove to myself that there is nothing behind this. And then I'll get back to work. (laughs) Then, When I went to research, there's a load of data 
that is not being shared with me in my journals. It's being shared in, in you know, uh, natural wellness journals and things, but I don't, I don't have any access to this data. And a whole bunch of other health professionals and ordinary people really don't either. So I started to shoot a few videos, and then I've ended up now shooting 100 three-minute videos on how to help people use Canvas and CBD that are available for free on my site. And then I have another 100 videos slated for production before Christmas time. And then I created a provider certification course for people who wanted to really do a deep dive and be able to provide CBD and cannabis recommendations to people they know. And, uh, and that's, uh, you know, blasting off now. We just launched that also. So I, I'm having a great time helping people learn about the safety and the efficacy and how to use the products. You know, your story about being, you know, in, in mainstream medicine and having a hard time finding studies like in your journals for something natural like cannabis and CBD. This yeah. is this is a story that is so familiar in the PCOS world uh, where you know, there's so many natural supplements that can help women with PCOS and uh so much of it is really not shared in mainstream medical. You have to really not shared. You have yeah. to search. I mean, I'm I'm grateful for PubMed because all of the data is available in PubMed, and I can search very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then I have two beautiful daughters that have uh, university relationships where they can pull all the research I need for me, and they're very speedy for me. So I'm I'm grateful for them too. And then I can just work. So, so I've been able to gather the data, but I agree you need to have somebody who has an, an expert uh, status or an interest in that so that they'll have the information that you need when you go to see them. Right. And you can really kind of mine the data. I think that's uh, what I've tried to do with PCOS Diva is to, you know, write articles that are um, medically evidence, you know, supported that so that you can actually click on those links from PubMed and download those uh, reports and bring them into your doctor because that's how doctors speak in that language of research and data. That's so funny. When I was in medical school, my older brother said, you're learning a new language. <laughs> I, would, I would literally sit with one book open and be reading, and I'd have the medical dictionary open on my right side, and then I'd get up to a word I didn't understand, and I'd have to look it up. So when my daughter went to medical school, I bought her her own medical dictionary, and then uh, two years later, I moved her for, into her uh, clinical training, and she still hadn't taken the plastic off. All that's online now. <laughs> So that just goes to show you how old I am. <laughs> oh, well, I know it would, when I first started this journey, um, gosh, uh, it's been a quite a long time. Um, yeah, it was hard to get that access to, uh, to information. And, and yes. we have that all at our fingertips now. All so. now. And there's so much great data. There's, you know, the, uh, the uh, CBD, um, I mean, we're going to be CBD centric today, although we can mm -hmm. go into cannabis if you're, if you like at a different event or, or later on, but mm -hmm. the CBD is so safe. The, uh, the brain has uh, CB1 receptors located, uh, uh, very generously throughout the, uh, all regions of the brain, except the, um, brainstem. So you really can't overdose on this stuff. If you take too much, it's not going to really do anything uh, to where you stop breathing or your heart stops beating because the brainstem where those body you know, behaviors are controlled are just not going to be stimulated by high concentrations of CBD or other cannabinoids. So you can, uh, you can be very safe in attempting to try it. People really get the most benefit out of a trial if they give themselves two weeks. Uh, at times when people say that didn't work for me or I didn't like that, it's often because they chose the wrong mode of administration to try it or they didn't give themselves enough time to titrate their dose and play with their dosing. A, a lot of times these, you know, somebody will buy a product that doesn't have that much CBD in the bottle and then when you take a dropper full or you take one gummy bear, you may only be taking like two and a half or five uh, milligrams as your serving size and that, uh, you know, is, is oftentimes not effective for what people are dealing with. So th this is such a big topic. Uh, I, I'm thinking let's 
first dive into some of the symptoms of PCOS that CBD can help. And then let's talk about the, the modes of delivery, as you sort mm-hmm. of just uh, alluded to, and how to find a, um, a good product. Because gosh, it seems like every vape shop in, in my community is saying that they're um, they are a CBD provider. So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if I would go in there where you buy like your mango jewels and buy CBD, but, um, you know, I'd love to know where you can get good, good product. Um, so let's, let's start with um, the symptoms of, of PCOS. Uh, what, how can CBD help a woman with PCOS? Well, I have a lot of patients who deal with uh, pelvic chronic pelvic pain from a number of reasons, uh, and uh, and people are using some vaginal suppository preparations that they're even making homemade. But the body naturally upregulates uh, CB1 receptors in areas of chronic pain or inflammation, and and there's studies that show you know you have. You have an an endocannabinoid system, the ECS, which your body already has in place. Uh, There's CB1 receptors all through the nervous system, and then CB2 receptors that are located all throughout the rest of the body. And that system just works to restore balance and homeostasis and help you have a better response to pain or inflammation or stress. So when you have an area of your body that's under a lot of pain or chronically inflamed, the body naturally upregulates the number of CB receptors in that area, and then you'll be able to stimulate it more. And the body upregulates the amount of endocannabinoids. The endocannabinoids are uh, cannabinoids that your body makes all by itself from the fats in your system. Uh, The endocannabinoids that we're familiar with that are the most prevalent ones are 2-AG and anandamide. And studies show that if you take fluid out of the knee of a rheumatoid arthritis patient, they'll have higher levels of 2-AG and anandamide in that joint fluid compared to people who have a healthy joint. So the body's already automatically upregulating these these, uh, receptors and then providing higher levels of 2-AG and anandamide to stimulate the receptors. So by using CBD, you know, it's going to stimulate those uh, endocannabinoid system receptors, the CB1 and CB2 receptors, and help to promote relief and restore homeostasis. So one of the underlying factors of PCOS is this chronic low levels of inflammation. Uh, So taking CBD orally for um, as like an like a natural anti-inflammatory is that something uh, just just to combat this low level inflammation is that something that you think would be helpful oh i think it's a great idea we have um, a number of studies that would suggest that you're going to get good results doing that Um, there's one particular study that i love with cold and flu season coming up it's uh it's a mouse model it's not a human model but nevertheless it's a valuable piece of research where mice were given cbd or not and then exposed to the flu virus and the, and the response to the acute infection was dramatically different when the mice were given uh, CBD before their exposure, particularly in the development of cytokines. The cytokines are interleukin. There's 17 different interleukins identified. And there's um, tumor necrosis factor. But the cytokines are the things that your immune system makes to make you feel bad when you're sick so that you lay down and rest. Um, Fever, body aches, loss of appetite, all of those things are are cytokine mediated. And you can see dramatic reductions up to 87% in interleukin 17, an 87% reduction noted in in the production of that cytokine with the flu virus. So you could give CBD you know, or to somebody uh, uh, to um, prior to exposure to the flu and and just not get as sick. That's what this study would suggest. Mm-hmm. You would still get the flu, but you wouldn't potentially be as sick as your neighbor who didn't pretreat with CBD. Mm-hmm. But for all kinds of, I mean, acute infection is one thing, but chronic inflammation is also significant too. There's the upregulation of the receptors, but there's also this modulation of the immune response for people that helps you to have a, a healthier response with CBD on board. 
So that would be good too for women. Uh, you know, a lot of women with PCOS have also an autoimmune um, related disorders that seem to be, you know, there, there's a thought that PCOS might be autoimmune related. So could that, so the CBD could possibly help kind of mitigate some autoimmune issues as well? Yep, the uh, CB1 okay. receptors are all throughout the nervous system in the in the spinal cord and in the brain. The CB2 receptors are really, they're all over your body. They're on your mm -hmm. kidneys and pancreas, but they're really concentrated on the lymph nodes and also on the B and T cells and natural killer cells all, and in the spleen. All of these areas of the immune system have a uh, have a very high concentration of CB2, so you can get um, you know a excellent relief of a number of different uh, conditions, you know, in the immune system. Or you can at least allow the CBD to help to modulate the immune response to different mm. levels of inflammation and and hopefully get a better response in a lot of cases. The individual studies around certain autoimmune diseases are still pending. It's more of like an immune modulation uh, um, overall. How does it affect the immune system? But all of those studies are ongoing and uh, very exciting. Okay, so if a woman with PCOS has, you, you had mentioned pelvic pain, um, oftentimes I think that is driven by endometriosis because I don't mm -hmm. think PCOS itself um, is painful, uh, but sh women also experience a lot of joint pain um, and, you know, caused by inflammation. And then, as I mentioned, the chronic uh, inflammation. So do you recommend an oral, for those issues, do you rec recommend an oral like CBD oil? Um, and then maybe for acute pain in your joints or, or in your, like maybe the pelvic, like like a cream or, or to, put, to or rub on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how effective these bombs are locally. They absorb very nicely locally and mm -hmm. then attach to the, uh, to the higher concentration of CB receptors. So um, people with joint pain seem to have very dramatic responses to the topical bombs. And then, uh, and there's also all kinds of different oral preparations. My advice would be to go with, with a tincture uh, or a vape as we identify a healthy vape option mm -hmm. or a healthy herb vape option, um, certainly with no flavorings. But a, a, but a product like that is going to have an onset of action of, you know, eight minutes where if you hold a tincture under your tongue, you can get it, you can get absorption across the uh, membrane on the cheek, but the best place to put it is right under the tongue. Um, and holding it under the tongue, you should have, a, you know, a response absolutely within nine minutes. And then you know if it's working and you know if you can add another dose. So I'll have patients literally put a timer on their phone for 20 minutes out. And if you um, take the product and you're not feeling it, you can, you know, try to take another dose or maybe even try to take another dose. The problem with using an edible is that, I mean, they're cute, the gummy bears and the, they're, they, they look so nice and they're, and they're candy flavored and what's the harm, but it takes 60 to 90 minutes to get an edible to kick in for you. And so at that point, you're not really sure if it's working and it's just, it makes for a really ineffective titration and people end up dropping out of studies that are using edibles. They just don't get their data fast enough and they, and, and they feel like they're wasting their time. So I, I know the edibles are more interesting, but make sure you try a tincture or, or a vape, a more rapid. And there's also hemp that you can roll up and smoke like a cigarette. So you can, you can buy hemp cigarettes too. And that will give you a very high concentration of CBD, and 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 that's uh, almost an instantaneous uh, onset of action too. So it just those mode of those modes of uh, of administration are going to allow you to know if you got a result quickly, and then be able to respond to that result. So is the vape and the cigarette are those healthy for our lungs? Well, the vapes have some issues, you know, I mean, uh, uh, vapes were brought into the U.S. to help people quit smoking, um, but the candy flavors and the cocktail flavors have ended up being very pleasant for a lot of people, and it probably has contributed to tobacco addiction, especially in our youth. Um, it, they, they compared known risks of tobacco 
and known health risks and known toxins in tobacco with vape products, and that's how they were uh, quickly brought into the U.S. But vape has vaping has special problems uh, because a lot of it is flavored, and those flavorings, especially the diacetyl, are specifically irritating to the lungs. Diacetyl is known to cause irreversible lung disease in otherwise healthy lungs. Also makes asthma, cystic fibrosis, and COPD worse. Um, but it also has propylene glycol and uh, and vegetable glycerin as sort of vehicles that carry the, the tobacco or the uh, cannabinoids in the vape. The propylene glycol and the vegetable glycerin break down into carbonyls and, um, and, and sugar burnt sugar products like formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, and acrylin. And all of those are found at, um, in tobacco, the formaldehyde, at, at, but at, at about at similar concentrations. The carbonyls you don't see in tobacco, cigarettes, but you don't really need more carbonyl exposure. The biggest issue with the vapes is going to be these vehicles that you're using, and it's also going to be the flavorings. So um, I think that there is a possibility to have a healthy vape. I think we just really need to take another look at, at the entire system. I mean, in places where we have good regulation in Europe and in the UK, you just don't see the crisis that you are seeing here in the mm -hmm. United States. So we just, we just, uh, it, it's a case for better regulation. Mm -hmm. So I do use a tincture and, you know, I mm -hmm. use it like sublingually kind of like you mentioned, kind of hold mm -hmm. it under my tongue. Um, for, for people who want to get started using CBD uh, for inflammation and pain, at what um, concentration do you recommend? Um, well, it's hard for me to recommend a concentration. Everybody is uh, so different, mm -hmm. and each of the preparations are so right, different. Right. You know, dropper full. I can't really recommend a half dropper full because I've seen, you know, uh, bottles that contain 250 milligrams of CBD, or I've seen bottles that contain 4,000 in some of the medicinally created mm -hmm. products. And and some people need those because some seizure patients are, you know, taking hundreds of milligrams three times a day. Um, mm -hmm. Many of my patients with joint pain or other problems are, uh, yeah, or insomnia, the way they're using it to sleep or, or using it for minor aches and pains or for to temper anxiety are only coming in around 20, sometimes as high as 50. But it is very individualized as far mm -hmm. as these serving sizes. We have to use the word serving size rather than dose in the U.S. or they're going to, or, or, or the FDA gets up. I don't know who gets upset. Some regulatory mm -hmm. agency requires that we say serving size instead of dose. But, um, but there is a wide variability. And, you know, when you, when you are taking multiple other medications or you, maybe if you have, you know, a, a history of hepatitis, a slower liver, you know, you may take even less. So it's just a great idea to get out a notebook and write down the product you're using and the dose that you took and then your response, you know, and do this 20 minute timer thing on your phone so that you remember to give yourself enough time to see if it worked. Mm -hmm. And the a zero, to, we're, we're designing an app for this so that you'll, so I'll be able to share an app with your audience eventually. But, um, but, but you can also do like a zero to 10 visual analog scale. Everybody's seen those where the person is, you know, joyous in at zero and sobbing at 10. And, and you, you like, how bad are your symptoms right now? A, a visual analog scale is really easy to implement where you can say, I mean, everybody's been asked about their pain. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, you're a lucky, lucky person. <laughs> but everybody's been asked, are you at an eight? Are you at a six? So it just uh, make note of that and then try your product and then you know, and then mm -hmm. reassess yourself in 20 minutes. So you had mentioned that you have a practitioner program. I think probably a lot of people are listening and thinking, geez, I, I, should, I should probably get my doctor on board with this. Um, but as we know, like, if I, gosh, if I went and talked to my um, primary care <laughs> physician at my next appointment, he's, I, I can pretty much guarantee he'll roll his eyes at me and um, say, you know, that, that's you know, not I've something. Had, I've had my own long-term, <laughs> a beautiful, wonderful crowd of very supportive uh, MDs and DOs asking me what I'm doing here, you <laughs> know, uh, but, uh, but I mean, the difference is profound. It's, uh, it's such a profound difference. And, you know, yes. I, I feel like we all should have some cannabinoids on board. If, if we weren't 
living in this very silly, excessively long prohibition that uh, that I'm going to put out there is probably the result of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, financial interests in pharmaceutical yes. and insurance companies. If we weren't under this crazy prohibition, you'd have cannabis growing in the ditch. I mean, it, it's easy mm -hmm. to grow, and uh, it, it'd be out in the fields, and your, your animals that you eat, assuming you eat animals, would be would be munching on these herbs while they're eating all of the other things and so you'd have some cannabinoids in your food you'd have cannabinoids in the air just floating in the air mm -hmm. as they're pollinating several times a year so i i think that all of us are probably deficient and and getting a little extra um cannabinoids in either a full spectrum product or an isolate or however you want to get them it may help to restore normality for a lot of people mm -hmm. rather than be you know I, I i would i i imagine it as a supplement that you would put in your cupboard right next to your probiotics and everything which is exactly where it is support. yeah which yeah. is exactly where it is but i guess my point is if you are concerned about like your liver health so lots of women with pcos have fatty liver issues um and they're also on lots of other uh pharmaceuticals so how how do we know um, that for our individual situation it's okay to to add this to our supplement regime? If our well, if our primary care physician yeah. can't give us any answers, <laughs> I have a hundred videos. So okay. I mean, you can if you're like, what is this going to do to my liver? I have uh, a video on that. <laughs> so or if you or if you think you know like how does this how does this work? And if and if you go on my site and you look for the video you want, you don't see it. I, all the emails from that site, the contact us comes directly to my email. So, you know, it's funny, I'll be thinking about, uh, I mean, I, I just went and spoke at the uh, uh, um, New England uh, Cannabis uh, Festival um, last weekend and got a couple of questions that I was like, huh, I hadn't thought about that. So I've got to go back and do a lot more work around the bipolar community um, based on that, that input. But no, the liver specifically, uh, it does uh, pretty well with the use of, uh, of CBD and other cannabinoids. There, uh, it, there have been some studies that make the suggestion that if you are have a seriously inflamed liver with hepatitis C, or if you are dealing with hepatitis steatosis, like a, a, a fatty liver with associated inflammation, you don't want to go with high, high doses of cannabinoids. This is something you'd want to really work on titrating and choose a lower dose. If there is any risk, it appears appeared to be concentrated in people that are using high concentrations of the product over or multiple doses over the course of the day. So I, I, I know I've shared with uh, listeners that, that I have used CBD for anxiety. Uh, that's something that I continually deal with. And I know so many women with PCOS do. It, mm. It's amazing how it helps with anxiety. Uh, and I often will take it before bed, uh, and it really helps with my quality of sleep. Yes. And then, of course, um, with pain, you know, if I've pulled a muscle or something, uh, and I've used it with my children for any of their athletic injuries, and it's really kept well them, you know, ha from having to give them um, Advil and Tylenol, which. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it's Advil and Tylenol sounds like so uh, harmless, but it's actually, we're finding out more and more that Advil really impairs our gut health. So uh, absolutely gut health and there's kidney side effects and there's also just very irritated to the lining of the uh, stomach. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, you know, there's study after study that shows like, for example, there were 80 women with fibromyalgia who were studied um, and, and, uh, and they saw reductions in their use of their, their current opioid and, and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory therapies by 50% or more. Half of them stopped Half of them stopped their prescription medications in favor of, uh, of their cannabinoid uh, preparations. So you can understand why these formulations have been creating a lot of anxiety in the insurance industry and in the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry. There's definitely power. And the anxiety and insomnia data just blows me away. There was one study that I love. Sorry, I'm sitting here in New York City and you just <laughs> never can get through 
30 minutes without a siren. <laughs> but here we are. I, they, it, it's, I wish we'd go to those little beeping sirens like in Europe. I heard we might. We'll see. But in any case, the, uh, um, uh, the anxiety study was done on a group of college kids with generalized anxiety disorder, um, kids who were really having a disruption with their anxiety to where they were having a hard time going to parties or even going to classes because uh, they were so stressed. And they took these 10 boys and um, gave them, uh, uh, gave them a, a CBD product at a high dose or they got nothing. And then they gave them an IV and a PET scan, <laughs> a functional MRI. So these poor kids that are already so revved up with anxiety got not only an IV poke, which is terrible, but they also got an MRI, which I, I, I can't think of a, a procedure that's harder to go through. And oh, well, there's a few that might be more. <laughs> but in any case, they, um, it, then they measured them at zero minutes 30 60 90 120 minutes and all the way out people that were exposed to the CBD uh, were calmer and just less anxiety and then they also had the PET scan the functional MRI to show that the brain was lighting up in a different way when there was CBD on board so we have these really really smart studies I mean I don't have 20,000 people that we put on CBD for 15 years and compared them to others that don't but actually, we have some really uh, uh, smart studies looking at brain health and cannabinoids in general, where um, there was an initial study years ago that where they take a group of babies and, and people agree to be followed over their whole lifetime for their health. And that's how we learn all kinds of things. We learn that it's important to sleep and it's important to eat your vegetables and you should be in loving relationships. All those things extend your life. But these, they also asked about their uh, cannabinoid use. And, uh, and, and initially, the, the first review of some old data suggested a six-point reduction in IQ if you regularly use cannabinoids. Uh, and then some New Zealand data came up behind the English data and said there's no difference, that they found no difference in a population-based group like this. And then the U.S., homegrown data, came up with a, a group of people that they've been following over their life times, including like 47 discordant identical twins. So identical twins, one of whom smoked, one of whom didn't. And, and that's such powerful data because they have the exact same DNA and the same upbringing. And they were able to show that there is no difference in intelligence when you're using these products as a young, as, a, as an adolescent and young adult. So very reassuring data on brain development. So you were talking about CBD oil in this podcast episode or, or however, you know, the vape, however you get deliver the CBD. Um, but that is absent um, for the most part of kind of that um, hallucinogenic, not well, it's not hallucinogenic, but that um, when you think of marijuana, smoking marijuana, that kind of feeling that you get. You don't That's get that the, from CBD. It won't get you high. Yes. The, psycho, the psychoactive effect is all THC. So, you know, if somebody uh, likened it as THC is, your, is, the, is the party animal and CBD is the sister who likes to stay home and read. That's me. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry that she's uh, going to take you out and uh, oh. take you for a ride. There's, there's just no psychoactive effect. With I know. CBD. I always tell my kids, your mother's no fun. So <laughs> that really fits my profile. Um, I, am, I am no fun. That's your profile. <laughs> Um, I love that, actually. You know what? I mean, there's there's a lot of valuable things to do right at home. It, it's <laughs> sometimes really nice to just not leave and, and be at home all day and work and, and create and enjoy your home. I'm, a, I'm definitely a, uh, you know, small house, big world kind of person. I don't spend much time in yeah. my home, but I do love being here when I'm here. So the, so I know I get, I get this question often, if, if I take CBD, what if I have to do a drug test at work? Mm. Is that... You're fine. Okay. CBD doesn't show up on a drug test. Um, there are, however, if you take a full spectrum hemp product, um, it'll have uh, the CBD and it may have traces of other cannabinoids. It can have up to 0.3% THC. So in that case, you might flip a drug test. So if, you, uh, so, so if you're really concerned about a drug test, make sure you choose a CBD isolate and not a full spectrum uh, CBD product. The mm -hmm. full spectrum, just it's a different distillation. 
Okay. And the distillation will allow a little bit of THC in the system, but it'll also keep the terpenes, which are very powerful. There's terpenes um, that do uh, all, all kinds of things, limonene, linalool, pinene. They're basically the essential oils or the aromatherapy of, of the plant. And uh, I've heard it that the THC and CBD ratios are the engine, and then the terpenes are the steering wheel. So they do, you know, create a higher level of alertness or they help you to relax or, you know, they, they come in behind the THC and CBD and do very powerful things. Mm. So um, I can potentially share with your audience uh, if you're interested, um, I, and I might just put it on my site because it's so great. Uh, Oleg at Lock and Key Remedies created a really beautiful uh, terpene report and uh, it covers, I think, the top 16 terpenes. Um, and, and the nice thing about terpenes is that you just, you get them from all the other things you're doing for your great health from lemons and basil and cacao and uh, um, all kinds of healthy food that you're already eating the more you ramp that up the more terpenes you have to help to oh that's interesting disease yeah yeah I mean that's why our our produce section you know the the health area of our of our supermarkets they really are our natural pharmacy they really are mm. that is such a good point. And I think one thing that all of us could do that we should go out and do today if we don't already have it is get a zester and mm. make sure your citrus is organic, which is sometimes hard to find. And then whatever, whenever you need a squeeze of lemon, do a zest of the lemon too. There's such a potent anti-cancer. Oh, that's, that's such a great, uh, so I just posted a tip about drinking warm water and lemon. And I've often mm. thought about adding that and it's just not part of my like habit routine. But I have a zester and I have some organic lemons because that's what I buy because I kind of put it in my water. Um, I have a gorgeous it, yeah. um, pasta dish that, uh, that where you heat up a little butter and olive oil together and then um, squirt the lemon juice in it. I put the zest in early so it cooks a bit and it gets a different flavor. And then I put the lemon juice in at the very last minute so it doesn't cook. And it gives it this super bright, really refreshing mm. flavor. If you eat meat, you can put shrimp on that or you mm -hmm. can you know put some chickens, whatever you're mm -hmm. inclined to do. But a whole grain pasta with this super lemony sauce all tossed in, my kids love it. So does cooking, um, that, that doesn't affect the healing properties of the zest or the, the juice, you know, is there? The limonene in citrus is so powerful that, that studies have shown that just smelling an orange mm. can transmit enough to, um, to change your mood. Yeah. So it can, it can treat uh, mm -hmm. a depression, just smelling. So, I mean, it, they probably in the future, I'm going to guess that most of the bait products are going to cut the CBD with terps because the CBD is too thick and you, mm -hmm. you have to cut it. And the, the PG and VG are going to, are going to be cited as issues, even though they're used around the world. But if you cut it with, you know, limonene and linalool, I mean, what a great idea. Mm -hmm. It cuts the best with THC apparently. See, there's a pro <laughs> see, now you're going to have to get into product development. <laughs> well, I do, a, I do a little bit of consulting, but there are brains that are a lot bigger on product development <laughs> than mine. I, uh, I, I love this research path I'm on and, uh, I, and I feel like I can be very valuable to, uh, to companies and to individuals, um, you know, helping people understand the research. But, um, but I suppose I could, uh, you know, do, I did a little product development this weekend in Las Vegas. Um, and, and, and also just thinking about how to sell these, pro how to make people understand the endocannabinoid system, because mm -hmm. it is, it is hard to imagine a system that regulates and balances your whole body. Like you people, you know, Oh, it works there. Oh, it works there. Like, well, it works. Well, everywhere. that's how I feel. I know it just, it helps on so many different levels. But um, then people start to wonder if that's even factual, like mm -hmm. how can it do all of this stuff? But when you have a, a system that literally is regulating everything at, there's, you know, there's certain hormones that affect everything, your thyroid, the cortisol axis, um, there, there are certain systems that thank goodness we're learning about the ECS system, but there's all kinds of systems that work to restore balance from your body. I mm -hmm. think your body is such a magnificent machine and that our creator just wants us to live a very healthy, pain-free, super happy life. And I, I, I think that these plants 
were given to us to help us achieve that. I so agree with that. And, and, you know, a lot of women get caught up in this idea of like my body betrayed me because I have PCOS and I know I was one of those women, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but when I finally shifted my mindset around that the symptoms that I'm experiencing are just my body's kind of cry for help to kind of come back to, for me to help it come back into balance. Yes. Um, and it's absolutely been these natural substances that, you know, the food that I'm eating, um, the supplements, the CBD, the sleep, you know, all of these things that, um, you know, the, like you said, the creator has given to us. <laughs> um, it's has really helped. fun to, yeah, to do yeah. all this balancing. And, uh, and it's not that complicated. Like, I don't think that you need some oil of the moringa nut bark or something <laughs> from the Amazon. I mean, it, when, when you look at just ordinary food, the, the most complicated thing about getting the results from cabbage is eating the cabbage, you mm-hmm. know, it's not delicious. And I, I mean, I had cabbage, uh, as my, as my salad last night, I had a massive bowl because I think one of the keys to long-term health is a, is a, is a, um, head of cabbage a week, but, um, I don't like it, but, but I, but it works. And so, it, and it really works to fill your stomach and create that sense of satiety so that you don't feel like you have to eat through all of the higher calorie things either. It really helps with weight stabilization, but you know, it's hard. The, A good the, slaw. I have some good slaw recipes in my meal plans. Um, oh, you can good. make it to taste good. Yeah. Slaw recipes. yeah. <laughs> I'll send but, you some. <laughs> that's the trick. The processed food industry has really mm-hmm. done a number on us. And uh, if we could oh, just figure out how to get back to natural foods, wouldn't it be amazing? Well, we wouldn't have any work. But I think that's part of the reason why people um, get so much benefit with the China, the China study and all of the vegan diet stuff. When you look at these um, blue zones, all the people in the blue zones are drinking a lot or they're smoking a lot and they're relaxed. You know, I think a lot of people think of these substances as really addictive and dangerous. Mm-hmm. But if we if we think about how how incredibly valuable it is to your body to enhance these experiences and mm. give yourself a, um, a really good experience, what it does for your cortisol and your hormone regulation and your, your fight or flight responses and everything for days, it, you know, mm. not only just in the moment, it's so cancer fighting to mm. have a beautiful social experience mm-hmm. and super good for your immune system, but you can think back on it and warm all of that up, you know, indefinitely. Gosh, Dr. Clifton, I could just keep chatting with you. We're like, you're, you're like a kindred spirit. Um, but we're running out of time for the podcast today. And I, and I just want to make sure that listeners uh, know where they can access all of your information. And I, we didn't really get to like uh, what to look for in a high quality product. I'm sure you have that information on your website. So just let us know more about a few products I love on my website. I can take any of your questions anytime through the contract, contact us. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have a few products that I've vetted from seed to sale that I'm very happy with. Um, And I, and uh, those are available, but of course I can answer questions. And then I just love everybody to come and check it out and get your questions answered at CBD and cannabisinfo.com and the, the and is spelled out cbd and cannabisinfo.com all of the videos are free you know and then we'll be sending you hopefully we, we, we're going to be sending newsletters you know like every couple weeks or month not all the time but with some other really great opportunities for you to you know have your best health great and we will be sure to put that in the show notes so you can come back to my site and find the transcripts and, and the show notes for this podcast. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day. I know you have to go record some more informational (laughs) videos for everyone. So today's hilarious. It's such a busy day, but I'm super excited. We finally got to have a great podcast and I'm, I'm happy to come back anytime. Great. Well, I will definitely have you back on. And thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to listen. Uh, I love sharing experts and information with you. And I look forward to being with you again very soon. Bye-bye. Well, that wraps up our podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us on the PCOS Diva podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. 
And if you liked this episode, remember to subscribe to PCOS Diva on iTunes or wherever else you may be listening to this show. And if you have a minute, please leave me a quick review on iTunes because I love to hear from you. If you think someone else might benefit from this free podcast, please take a minute to share it with a friend or family member so she can benefit from it too. And don't forget to sign up for my free weekly newsletter. Just enter your email at pcosdiva.com to get instant access and make sure you never miss a future podcast. This is Amy Medling wishing you good health. Bye-bye.